G'day people, welcome back to the lab. We have an Apple wireless keyboard here today, otherwise known as a A1314 Gen 3. I bought this off eBay and it has a stuck battery. You can see the corrosion here and that's not good. So let's start up all the test equipment and fix this keyboard. First of all, we had to remove the battery cap and the keyboard, which is located at the end of this end of the keyboard. And the best way to do that is just use a coin that'll fit the slot. Here in Australia, we will use a 10 cent piece. Um, if you're in another country like uh, New Zealand, you may use a 50 cent piece. Um, and you know, whatever coin fits the slot of the battery cap in your country, uh, that's the best coin to use. If possible, insert your coin into the slot and then turn in a anti-clockwise direction. And keep on spinning the cap until it pops out. But if your cap is corroded on here, we have to take a few extra steps um, if it's jammed up. Here we have a corroded battery cap and we prepared this earlier by squashing a battery and then putting the keyboard in a vise and forcing that squash battery into the keyboard and then letting it leak everywhere. The best way to attack this situation is get on a pair of gloves and then squirt down the top was with some isopropyl alcohol and then get some tissue and wipe off all that gunk just to clean it up a little bit. Get rid of all that excessive battery acid. We now apply our favorite penetrating lubricant. So get a bit of rag, make sure you're wearing gloves on both hands use a rag to protect the front of the keyboard and the keys and then apply WD-40 or Penetrin or your favorite lubricant. Some people even use lemon juice and let that sit and settle for a while. After a couple of minutes have passed, get some more tissue and then just wipe off the excess WD-40. And what we want is that WD-40 to actually get in there in the threads of the battery cap, just to loosen things up a little bit. If you're really lucky and the WD-40 has done its job, you can just get your coin and turn in an anti-clockwise manner. But if it's jammed up as it is here, there is another way of opening the battery cap up. You make a concoction of white vinegar and a couple of squirts of lemon juice. Insert the battery cap end of the keyboard, making sure this acidic concoction covers the cap but does not go near the keys on the keyboard and let it soak overnight. The next day, put that opening coin in a vise Engage the coin in the slot of the battery cap and turn anti-clockwise. Hopefully that will help crack the battery cap. But if the coin is not cutting the mustard, you will have to use the destructive method. This may damage your keyboard. Place the keyboard in a clamp with soft jaws. Only clamp around the barrel. Drill out both ends of the slot and the middle with a three millimeter or one eight inch drill. Create a nice deep slot like this. Put in a big flat screwdriver into a vise. Put on some protected gloves and turn with a heap of force. Then remove the cap. Do not use your fingers. Now that we have removed the battery cap, 
we next have to remove this bit of plastic here and that will expose the inner workings of the keyboard and for that we're going to need a Stanley knife and we're just going to push it into this area here and then exploit and pop off the actual plastic itself but we'll have a look at that under the microscope to get a closer and clearer view. We get our Stanley knife blade and locate the left edge of the plastic and we move in one centimeter no more than half an inch and then we place a blade in between the plastic and the aluminium body of the keyboard just poke it in there gently work away at it and then it should just pop through and then give that a quick twist and it should just break away just like that exposing all the internal circuitry. The reason we only move in one centimeter is because we don't want to go any further and accidentally cut this flexible cable right here. We now release our little retaining screw here with a Phillips triple zero screwdriver. And now we're going to release this cable from the back. We need to remove this ribbon cable, but we have a locking mechanism here. It's just a matter of getting a small flat jeweler screwdriver and going under this little lip here and then going against the aluminium case and just give me a slight pry backwards. And we do exactly the same thing on the other side, pushing it back and we can see our little cable lock has come undone and we should be able to just pull our ribbon backwards just to clear that plug. We now flick this little ribbon cable back and we get a little bit of masking tape and we just tape it down like this clear of everything here. We now have to slide all the circuit board out to this side of the keyboard and we do that by getting a flat screwdriver and just putting it in where the spring is and then pushing across and that will release the whole mechanism and pop it out and this is the actual guts of the keyboard. Now is the opportunity to remove any loose batteries that are inside so if you only have one battery that's jammed in here, if you tilt your keyboard to the left, you might see a battery pop out, or if you tilt it to the right, you might see the other side pop out. Whichever way, all you have to do is get that battery and then feed it past any cabling or obstructions and then remove that battery completely, leaving this area totally free. The next thing you're going to need is a piece of timber dowel or metal rod, no thicker than one centimeter or three eighths of an inch. And you're going to need it a little bit longer than the actual keyboard itself. So about 35 centimeters or 14 inches in the old money. And what we're going to do with this piece of dowel or metal rod, whatever you have is we need to insert it from the left side of the keyboard through, clear any obstructions here, such as flexible cable, and then down into the battery chamber. And what we're going to do next is we're going to hit this with a hammer and force the ejection of the faulty battery on the right side of the keyboard so we'll push on with that now put your keyboard in the vertical position with your stick upright and what we're going to do now is we're going to eject the battery some hard hits if the battery is a bit stubborn you may have to apply your favorite lubricant down the uh, battery chamber
And if you have a look here, you can see the battery is a right old mess. Now it's time to clean the battery chamber in the actual keyboard itself. And for this, you're going to need a small toothbrush. We're using a Peppa Pig toothbrush in this case, and we're using it for two reasons. Uh, a, because it's small, and B, um, you can't beat Peppa Pig. And we also have a solution here of isopropyl alcohol, 99%. Don't use rubbing alcohol, um, it's just not the right stuff, it won't do the job. We'll put our battery cap in here as well to soak. And all you have to do is get your toothbrush, dip it in the isopropyl alcohol, and stick it into the battery chamber, and just give it a bit of a light brush. Notice that we've got our gloves on here, because we have no idea what's going to pop out of the battery chamber. So we want to protect our hands and just a matter of dipping again and giving a good old scrub out to get rid of any remnants of a double A battery and get it all nice and clean. And then we can reassemble the whole keyboard unit. Our keyboard is now clean and dry we had to give our keyboard a bit of a washout in a container full of isopropyl alcohol. We just gave it a bit of a slush just to wash out the last remnants of uh, rubbish from the battery. And also with your Peppa Pig toothbrush, as soon as you finish with this, chuck it in the bin. Uh, you don't want your kids sticking this in their mouth um, after you've finished cleaning uh, a keyboard with it. So that's not a good idea. Any which way, what we have to do now is we have to put the electronics back into the keyboard itself. And all we have to do is sit the guts of it upright like this. And then from our left side, just insert and then push it in. You may need to clear some cables here. So we'll just pull those back slightly and we'll get this in its position and give it a final push in at the end. We next get our little Phillips screwdriver and we reinsert our little retaining screw. Let's get it down the hole and screw that back into its little home. We take away our tape to release this little ribbon cable and we'll just push it to the back here and we'll put it back in its little connector and we'll do that under the microscope so you can get a bit of a clearer view. Coming from the back of the keyboard we get our little ribbon cable and we just insert it underneath this locking bar push it all the way in. Let's get it all the way home. Lovely. And then what we do is we push our locking bar back into place. Push in one side and the other and go back to the original side. And you know your cable's in all the way because you should see a very thin blue line here. So our ribbon cable is now locked in. Next, we put in some fresh batteries, positive end down. And then we either get a coin or a flat screwdriver. And we put our little battery cap back on. Turn it until it locks in. Don't panic if your old battery cap has been destroyed because you can easily pick new ones up from eBay and they only cost a couple of dollars each. We are all done. The moral of the story is always try and change your batteries at least every six months. At least it's working now and that's all that matters. If you're interested in repairing other stuff yourself, check out the rest of our channel 
Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Other than that, we will see you next time in the lab.